Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com, and it's time for another Beat Matt Bat Rap. We work so you can play. Mini War Gaming's Beat Matt Bat Rap. And once again, playing against Angel all the way from Puerto, 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 Puerto Rico. Rico. Puerto, Puerto, Rico. Puerto, Puerto Rico. There you go, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Instead of, I guess, Puerto Rico, if you want to anglicize it. And Angel, if you want to anglicize it. It's really Angel. Uh, how do you say from? De? De Puerto Rico. De Pu Puerto Rico. There you go. I can speak French, not Spanish, sorry. And uh, we are going to be playing a 2,000 point game of Grey Knights versus Necron. So we got Super Psychic versus the exact opposite of Super Psychic. So what would that be like? No Psychic. No Psychic. That, well, mm -hmm. I guess that's one way of saying it, yeah. And uh, we've already done the pregame show, so you can check out the armies at the link below. We're just going to jump right into it. We got a bit of a special scenario. We're using the Maelstrom scenario. Um, <laughs> I don't remember the name. It's the one where you can steal your opponent's tactical objectives yeah. for the steal it for holding the uh, objectives. Uh, but we are switching it up a little bit because, well, you'll just have to see. Take a look, and let's jump right into the scenario. And we are playing the Maelstrom mission, The Spoils of War. What that one basically is, it's just like the other ones. You draw three tactical objectives per turn, or up to three meaning you have to have three at the beginning of each of your turns. But you are allowed to score your opponent's tactical objectives where they are secure objective whatever, one through six. And uh, so that's a big deal because you have access to more tactical objectives. And you're not allowed to discard objectives that are secure objective X unless, of course, somebody achieves it. And so what we've actually done here is we set up six bastions, and the bastions are going to be the tactical objectives. So in order to claim it, you have to be in base contact with it, or inside it, or on top of it. So that's, that's our rule. So not within three inches of it, you have to be in base contact. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's claimed by your opponent, meaning that your opponent owns the building. It's, it's whoever is touching it, and that counts for contesting as well. So if somebody's inside, and somebody and the opponent's touching it, well then, you do the normal rules as if they're both within three inches of the objective. So we've numbered them one, two, three, somehow that one got changed, it should be four, five, and six. And they all start out unclaimed, including the Fortress of Redemption. And then we rolled off for sides, and uh, I got to choose sides, so I chose the side that was closer to the Fortress of Redemption for obvious reasons. And then we rolled for who deploys first, and Angel won that roll off and deployed first with his army. And of course, you can see details of these armies in the pregame show. But he basically decided to claim this one, so he owns this building now. So we're following all the new rules for the building, so there's a few new things here. And uh, other than that, all his guys are just sitting outside of it. He does have the squad with uh, the, the Super Justicar guy in reserves. Yeah, so this is the access point, and there's also an access point over here for the Fortress of Redemption which will be good for my immortals, who are nice and close to it. Yeah. Oh wait, how come I thought I saw a door there? Because they all look like doors. Oh, that's right. No, for some reason I thought that one was a door. <laughs> so they'll have to just do a difficult train roll and jump on top of it. Yeah. Which is fine too, because it's nice and low. So because they, they want to go up there and claim that one for themselves so they can f start firing this big bad boy as soon as possible. So that's it. That's all. We're all set up now. It's just a matter. There's no night fighting. We decided that just beforehand. We rolled off our warlord traits, and you rolled the one that has, gives your art, gives you guy. My warlord and all friendly units within 12 inches move through cover. Move through cover, and I got the one that gives me plus one to my run and charge distances to the warlord and everybody within 12 inches. So we both rolled on command traits because the tactical traits probably wouldn't make as much sense in this mission. So now it's just a matter of do you want first or second turn? I want to go first. Okay, and I will try to steal the initiative. Trying to steal the initiative! Oh, I do! I'm sorry. I hate that rule. I had no. to do it because it's dumb not to. <laughs> oh, okay. Necrons, turn one. So I draw three objectives to start. Harness the warp. Yay, one I can't do whatsoever. It's you have to do a psychic power. Okay, well, I'm not going to be doing that one. Witch Hunter. If I kill at least a psyker, psychic pilot, or brotherhood of psyker, so that's everybody in your army. So I just have to kill something. Entire unit. An entire unit. Um, or, because even the vehicle. Yeah, the vehicle. Is, yeah, so I gotta destroy an entire unit and I get a point. So that kind of makes up for the opposite of Harness the Warp thing. And Kingslayer, D3 victory points for killing your, your Warlord. So no tactical objectives, to, or no secure spots yet. Which means you can't grab any of mine. Although I will be discarding the, uh, the Psyker one, that's for sure. 
We're going to start off by having these immortals do a difficult terrain so they can jump up on the battlements there. Four inches. That gets the front guys up because it's two inches up, so I lose two inches of movement and everybody else will just have to move up to it. So this is now claimed by the Necrons. Not that it matters because there's no emplacements. Actually, these guys can go four inches. Katana go right to here. And remember, this is the shooty one. Yep. Yeah. And the rays are gonna zip up. They ignore difficult and dangerous altogether. So they're jump packs that don't do dangerous. Oh, sorry. There was a circle skull in there. I guess it's gone anyways. Because I'm within six inches. And they are up there. And just to clarify, we're not doing mysterious objectives because they're not mysterious. They're bastions. Monolith is just gonna hover it over here. Difficult terrain for the immortals as they started in the trees. Four inches. So they're not getting to that bastion quite yet. And these move forward. My doomsday arcs are gonna hold still for obvious reasons, because they want to blast something. This one's actually just gonna pivot on the spot, because the monolith is in his way otherwise. Psychic phase! Uh, I'm choosing a number between one and five. What is it? It's an integer, just so you know. Three? No, it's two! Huh. Sorry. So shooting phase, these guys don't really have any targets. Uh, no, they're just gonna run. Six inches. This thing's six inches long, so I just basically have to keep it back. And that servo skull will disappear. Ooh, that's my six from stealing the initiative. Bad memories. And firing the Doomsday Cannon, which is a Strike 9 AP1 Large Blast. I'm going to plunk it right there, so it'll actually also hit the building. I'm not allowed to target the building, because it's not claimed, but I can still cover it. Scatter! Oh, it's going to miss. It's going to scatter three inches. This guy? Oh, actually, no, it'll still hit somebody. So it'll go right there. So three inches off of him, so I hit two of them. Yep. So two hits on them and one on the building, so twos to wound. Oh, I got a one! It's AP1, but they have a 5 plus invuln. Oh, one of them goes down, so it'll be the closest. So this guy is closest. This guy? Or no, this the guy, guy in the end. Yeah. Look he's out, close. sir. Oh, is he a sergeant? He is. Look out, sir. Fails. No. no. And then ordnance hit on the building. Strength, 9, but it's ordnance, so I get to roll two dice and pick the best one. And neither of them do anything, because that's just 12. I guess armor, 14. And this other one is going to fire... It's strength 9 AP1 blast. I can see this guy into my arc. Oh no! Four guys hit. Two's to wound. Uh, won't be any saves. Oh, four wounds. So this guy's out in the open, but these three will have cover saves. So three, four plus cover saves from the, the battlement. Go for it. Oh, they survived! The monolith is actually out of range. Just out of range. So if I had fired the monolith first, then he might not have been able to fire at it, but oh well. So Monolith cannot shoot, and he, since he's heavy, he can't go all out. However, these two Gauss weapons are in range of that squad, so they will fire. Six shots, I didn't fire the ordnance, so they're hitting on threes. Three hits. First a wound. Nothing. This guy's gonna run. Two inches, actually three, because he's within 12 inches of the Warlord. Over to you. These guys are gonna run as well. So it'll be five inches, because the Warlord's trait. I'm gonna run this over here. Now I claim this one and this one for the Necron Empire, which means at the end of the shooting phase, I will be able to fire those missiles. Just frag storm missiles, but still. We did not upgrade them to the crack storm missiles because that is ridiculous. The Catan's one power is out of range, but the other large blast can go right there. And he's blissed skill five. That's a direct hit, so we hit three of them. Strength four, so winning on fours. Whoa, three wounds. AP nothing, so three up saves. And one more guy goes down. Anyway. That's... No, I'm going to let him take... Oh, this guy? Yeah, he's actually closest. Dude. And you're back. And the rays are going to run. Three inches. I'm just going to bring him a little closer. And touch this objective. Although it doesn't matter because he's all troop choices anyway, so he can take it even if I don't have... Even if I have guys there. End of the shooting phase. Before leadership tests are rolled, I can fire the, the missile. It'll be at Bliss's skill 2, and it is a large blast strength 4 AP5. I'm going to drop it right here on top of that one guy's head. And it's going to scatter 4 inches. So it'll be to here, and it hits nothing, because it doesn't count for the guys at the bottom. Yeah, I won't hurt the 
And that is the end of Necron's turn one. So stole the initiative, moved up, killed the Terminator and two of his regular Marines, which isn't humongous losses, but it's annoying that when you were supposed to go first, instead you start your first turn with already at some losses. Do have one leadership test that we have to make. They're not fearless, right? No, they're not. So we'll do that right now. Leadership nine or run off the board. Oh, okay, good. I saw the five first. It's the beginning of Grey Knights. Secure objective six. Number two, and three. Wow. Well, here's number two, here's number three, and there's number six. So number six will be mine. I'll unfortunately, I have to actually move over and get it, though. But two and three, you can easily get this turn. Three, you've got. Mm -hmm. Moving on up. And he's got his teleporter, so he can jump 12. Does that make him a jump monster creature, or just it, that he can move 12? No, nah, he makes him a jump monster creature, and once per game, he can shunt 30 inches. 30, 30 inches, inches, wow. And the Librarian and his posse are going to load up into the Land Raider. And cruising speed at the Land Raider. He wants to get up in my face. Which is the best thing to do. So it's actually, because he gives units within 12 inches of him move through cover, the Land Raider does not get dangerous train rolls. Mm -hmm. Automatically passes. Well, automatically passes them, yeah. These guys are actually going to jump inside the building. Now, they can't go on the battlements. That, that's a new thing in 7th edition. So you have to embark into the building, and then the next turn disembark onto the battlement. Yeah, so you're just going to so put one guy on there just to show. So he claims the building, but does not go on the battlements. Ready for the psychic phase? Yep. Actually, just before we go into the psychic phase, he's going to drop these guys from the battlements to inside of the building, so he can use the fire points. Psychic phase, how many? Five. So I get five, and you get more than five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Mm -hmm. Wow. So hammer hand on the squad, the paladins, yeah. four plus. It's just warp charge one. You got two of them. I will not try to deny that. Okay. okay. And then he's gonna cast force because the katan is nearby. And he gets it with two, so I won't try to negate that either. So force and hammer hand on that squad. Force on these guys because the wraiths are nearby. They got it. <laughs> I'm not gonna try to <laughs> negate that either. And hammer hand on these guys. Okay, he's only got one, so I'm gonna use all five dice, and I don't negate it. And the Land Raider, the Psychic Pilot inside, will cast Sanctuary to give itself a 6-up invuln. And it succeeds, because it's Warp Charge 1, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Land Raider is going to go flat out, just to get as close as possible. It's going to be hard to fit. We're just going to move these trees around a little bit, so that I can fit that there. We were counting the Bastions of having two fire points on each side, so four guys can fire out of it, because a fire point on a building allows two guys to fire out of each of them. So we'll have four guys firing here, side cannon, and three of the bolters. Yeah. Three storm bolters hitting on threes. And these have the psi ammo, or psi ammunition. bolt ammunition, so they're strength five. So strength five, so threes to wound. So five hits and threes to wound. Ooh, four wounds. AP five, so I still get my three up armor. One dies. Rawr. And then the other guy who won't be able to fire at the fire point is going to man the heavy bolter. He's going to fire that at the squad. So hitting on threes. Three hits. Threes to wound. One wound. And three up armor save. I make it. Okay. Side cannon moves, so it's just two shots and loses rending. So one hit. Strength seven AP four, so two's to wound, one wound. Three up armor. I'm good, that's a six. And we just check something really quickly, and the side bolt ammunition actually applies to the heavy bolter that he's manning. It just says if the model is firing one of those weapons, including heavy bolter. So there was actually two twos that he rolled, so that's two more wounds. So three plus saves, so I made them. And then torrent. Yeah, it's uh, gonna hit, looks like, six, seven of them. Alright. Strength six, AP four, so two's to wound. Uh, that's all of them. They're all three up saves, so let's roll them together. One dies. Oh no. <laughs> Just the guy in the front. So the two storm bolters are gonna fire, because the other guy with storm bolter is gonna man the heavy bolter. So two storm bolters, four shots, hitting on threes. And strength five, so wounding on fives. One wound. Four up in bomb. Make it. Heavy Bolter, hitting on threes. We have to strength six now, so we need on fours. One wound. Four up in bomb. Oh, I make it. Wow. And the side cannon, hitting on threes. Oh, just one hit. Strength seven, so we need on threes. One more wound. And a four up in bomb. <laughs> He's and he shakes it off. And the squad is going to run. They want to get cover in those forests from all the ordnance blasts yeah. that are coming their way. They're pretty good. So that's it for shooting, so we got reanimation. I do have a resurrection orb in here, so four pluses. Neither of them, so both of them will stay down. So at the end of his turn, objective-wise, he has this one and this one, so that gives him two points. 
Nobody's got first blood yet, because we just kind of nicked off a few points from each other. So it's 2 nothing for the Grey Knights. But you do have Secure Objective 6, so I could go for that. The problem is I have nothing that I want to go for it with, because if I move that vehicle, then he's, he sucks at shooting. The Catan wants to go after you, and these guys want to go and secure this awesome twin-linked Icarus last cannon that would just be, or Icarus, whatever. So we'll see. We'll see what we do there. So I have to draw back up to three. I had discarded the one which was make a psychic power, which obviously I never will do. So let's draw a new one. Demolitions. Score one victory point at the end of your turn if at least one gun emplacement or enemy building was destroyed during your turn. Wow, okay. So, so far I'm getting all the ones which is like, kill! Don't worry about objectives, just murder! And you're getting the one that's like, hey, maybe we should actually try to reclaim this, which actually kind of makes sense. So the cards somehow are giving us, like, what makes sense. The Necrons are trying to destroy it, and the Grey Knights are trying to grab it. Catan's moving up to here. And that thing will disappear. Yes. These guys are going to move out. It's the perfect way for your Flamestorm cannons to toast them. Because I'm trying to stay out of the way of the, the big old blast. Look at that. If you survive, they are in trouble. I'm just going to try to destroy that Land Raider. And it's difficult terrain up here, but I need to get over there. Five inches, that should do it. So they're up here, so I claim this one too. So I almost claim the entire Fortress of Redemption. So watch out. So it wasn't fast enough to get in base contact, so I'll have to fire automated at Blizzard Skill 2 rather than at my awesome Blizzard Skill 4. Well, it is as much as Blizzard Skill 4 since it's Twin Link. Yeah, I guess it was, but I'd be Twin Link Blizzard Skill 4. Or the Twin Link Blizzard Skill 2. Yeah. And these guys are going to zip forward. You know what, maybe I'll just use them to take it. Oh, you got Force Weapons activated with your guys, though. Oh, well. I'm 3 plus in Vuln. What am I worried about? I'm going to move up to here. Moloth is just going to shift back to here. He realizes he wants to go for that objective, and he needs to get out of the way of this guy. Psychic phase! I'm thinking of a number between 10 and 15. Actually, hold on. Here's the psychic phase. Okay, think of any number that's greater than 30, but has double digits, like the same digit twice, has to be less than 100, integer, okay. like, for example, like 44 or 55, like that kind of thing, all right? Okay, you're thinking about 77. Yeah. Now, what did you think? 99. Ah, okay. I tried. I failed my psychic phase. Annihilation Barge is going to fire strength 9 AP1 ordnance at this building. That guy's inside of it, so it will not hit him. Well, it will hurt them if they take a glancing or penetrating hit. And... Well, that might hit it. Two, yeah, two inches. It's totally going to hit it. Just, so strength 9 ordnance, AP 1. So I really want this to, to hit. Uh, so I need a 5 to glance. Oh, we got a pen! So it's AP 1, so I add 2 to this roll. So if I roll a 5, it's collapsed. 1! Oh, so it's just 3. So this loses the hull point. It's down to 3. There you go. Just use the red marker for that. And the guys inside take D6 strength 6 hits. So three strength 6 hits, or AP nothing though. Two's to wound. Two wounds. Three up armor. They're fine. And the emplaced weapons can only snap fire next turn. I'm gonna rapid fire the Necron Immortals into the uh, Land Raider, try to strip off its armor. So he will get a four up cover from this because some of them are being blocked a little bit by the Bastion. So hitting on threes. And sixes to auto glance. Three. Four up cover. So that's good. That's a five. So two hall points lost. And he's down to two hall points left. These immortals will just take some pot shots at your Dread Knight. Actually, no, they could try to take down that building, like glancing it. So we'll do that. So only five guys can see it. So three shot or five shots. Hitting on threes. And seen on sixes. One glance. So it gets a five up cover save from the Dread Knight. And it fails it. So it's down to two hall points. And this one is going to take a shot at the building. Oh, see? He's already given up. So right there. Ooh, that's a miss. Because that's like seven inches. Seven inches will get somewhere around over here. Too bad. The Catan is going to fire all its weapons into this little squad. So I'm going to fire the one with eight shots. I'm going to ignore the one that has the blast, just because I'll more likely do damage to myself. Hitting on twos. And wounding on fours. Five wounds. Three up armor. Oh no! They all have died! <laughs> what? Okay, I guess I don't have to charge them. And you know what? That's a Psychic kill. So that gives me a victory point. Awesome. That is also first blood. So technically the score right now is two to one because I don't score the other victory points until the end. 
So that's the end of my shooting before leadership test. So emplacements will fire. Me. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to fire at that because I don't want the Catan to charge them anyways because they all have Force and Hammer Hand turned on right now. So, boom! At that thing. So it's only Bliss of Skill 2, so I hit on 5s, but it's Twin Link, so I'm just going to roll two dice at the same time. One of them is a 5+, plus. I got it. Hey! Both of them are. That means I double got it, so I only get it once. Figure that one out. So Strength 9, so I need a 5 to glance. Oh, a pen! Does get a five-up cover save from the Dread Knight. Oh, and he got it! Oh, and we got a heavy bolter. One hit. The wound, nothing. So assault phase, he's declaring assault there. I'm not going to bother rolling for it because he's within two inches. Now I'm going to declare a charge against him. He does get D3 Overwatch shots from his cannon. Let's go ahead. So three. This is, he's actually rolling a D3, so that three is a three. Strength six, AP four, so two's the wound. Oh, just Ooh. one wound. Three up invuln. I'm fine. I need a 10 inch charge. It is for difficult terrain, which won't matter for me because he's a higher initiative than me and I ignore difficult because they're awesome. But 10 inches. Oh, eight inches. That would have been awesome if they got in. So this guy has been upgraded with Entropic Touch, which is for every hit that I do on a vehicle or building. See, there's your way to get rid of hall points. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, that gets rid of armor value without getting rid of hall points. We were talking about how a building would actually lose all its armor without its hall points. And it would be as far as it got zero. Yeah, so Entropic Touch could do that. But Entropic Touch already specifies that it'd get wrecked. But anyways, so I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do a smash attack, even though my strength seven is not enough to get through. I'm just hoping that I'll get enough hits and strip down his armor and then get through. So five attacks, hitting on threes. Oh, only three hits. Four up to reduce armor. Oh, we got all three! So your armor is down to 11 on all facings. A land rate for armor 11. How's that make you feel? It's like a rhino. Yeah, almost, yeah. So strength seven versus armor 11 doesn't seem so bad. I need a four to glance. Oh, I didn't destroy it! I just glanced it, so it's down uh, to one hall point. Oh, you oh, have a six up in vault. Sanctuary. So. That's right, you put sanctuary on it. Six up in vault. No. no. So it's down to one hall point. That's a big deal because of this. <laughs> These guys are so toast. <laughs> And so is he when they get out and charge him. And that is the end of my turn, which means I score another victory point for having destroyed a Psyker. And I don't have objective number six. So I do not get that one. So that brings it up, the score up to two to two. So it is tied as we go into Grey Knights, turn two. So you draw two more objectives. Secure objective six. <laughs> oh. And overwhelming firepower. So destroy something in the shooting phase. And if you destroy three things, you get D3. One squad of reserves on a three plus? Of course not. So movement phase, remember this guy has moved through cover because of his warlord. He's pushing my guy out of the way. Tank shocking him, I guess, technically. And right there. He's gonna rotate again. There. Then disembark your guys. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Oh, I don't have to be one inch away. No. Because uh, if you stay in base contact with me, I actually get no, to I hit just, the vehicle. Yeah, but I rub them off. So yeah. Push them up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is there. So go. He realizes that this one, this sponson is not a 180 degree sponson, so he has to turn it. Right. So that'll limit the amount of firing he can do, but it's still worth it to get that much on there. Mm -hmm. so these guys are going to move through the difficult terrain, see if they can get up there. Only three, three inch. inches, so they no. won't be able to. So, Forgot about his move through cover, so you actually get another die. Nope, three inches it is. And he's going to use his once per game ability to shunt the Dread Knight, because he wants to get objective number six. So it's just gonna teleport. And it doesn't deep strike or anything, it just moves it within 30 inches. Right to there. Ooh. Actually, he's gonna put him over here. What's wrong, what are you worried about? Four size? size? <laughs> <laughs> there. Second phase, how many? Five again. So that'll get, you've lost one squad, so you only get up to 13 this yeah. time. Yeah. Okay, he's gonna cast Endurance on himself. This is warp charge two, so he needs two four pluses. Oh, wow. that sucks. Yeah. Hammer hand on the squad. It's the warp charge one. Oh no, oh. you failed it. Okay. I didn't care about hammer hand, but we do care about force. force. Warp charge one, and he's got, got three it. of them. So I'm not going to try to deny that because he still has three more dice, and that's three six seven eight. <laughs> and he's going to cast prescience on himself, and he got it. All right, I take that back. It's warp charge two, so he failed that one too. So now I roll these five dice just for fun. Look, I denied something. Oh, oh baby, I set that one up poorly. You actually put it on the tip of your weapon, so you can actually get like all but two. Okay. Take it back. All but one. 
Wounding on twos, no save. So, nine. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. And they're both the same, so I'll take this one. Nine. And the other one's gonna use Machine Spirit, fire at the Catan. One hit, wounding on a three. Four up in bowl. Oh, he takes it. So he's down to three wounds. So this squad is gonna fire out. The emplacement is gonna have to snap fire, but the rest of the guys are fine. So three Storm Bolters on the Immortals. Be on threes. Ooh, six hits. Five, so threes to wound. Oh, two wounds. Three up armor. They're fine. Yes. Side cannon did not move, so he has four shots. Because he didn't move, it is rending, so two's rending. So four wounds. Three up armor. There's one guy. You guys are tough. Yeah. The heavy bolter will be snap firing because of the last phase. So three shots, sixes to hit. It's the guy firing though. Yeah, but in placed weapons. It says in placed weapons snap fire. It right, doesn't say do whether it. they're manned or unmanned. Uh, no. And this squad is going to open fire on the Catan. Two Storm Bolters first, so four shots on threes. Three hits. The wound. Two wounds. Wow. We're up safe. Oh, he takes a wound! You're going to take him down with the shooting? Heavy Bolter hitting on threes. And then wounding on fours at strength six. One wound. Up save. He's fine. And finally the side Cannon. Four shots hitting on threes. Three hits. Strength seven on this, right? Yeah. So threes to wound. And rending. And rending. Well, the rending won't matter. He's four up in bowl. Three up. Three wounds. We're up save. Got two wounds left. Oh, he's down to one wound. So close. Knight's going to fire the heavy incinerator into this squad. Two's to wound. Ooh, that's a lot of wounds. The Lord is closest, so he's going to look out, sir, all of these. Except one. So he takes the, the one. He has a two plus armor, though. He's fine. The rest of them are three plus armors. So two guys go down. So that'll be these two immortals. And, and this squad is going to fire here to try to finish them off because they realize they can't really harm this. And so they're the best target. So here's some storm bolters. One hit. Three's to wound. Three up armor. I'm not going to look out, sir, because I want him to die and I want him to survive because then everybody can come back. I'm good. And a librarian will fire his storm bolter. One hit. See, so he, he's, he's toughness five, so I forgot this squad is now toughness five right now. Mm -hmm. so it's actually a five to wound. Did that last one wrong, but I think it's okay. Yeah. And the side cannon. Four shots hitting on threes. Oh, just one. No, so two's to wound. Rending. So one wound. Hitting on the Lord. Three plus. Oh, and he goes down, but he's got ever living. So snap firing the emplaced bolter at them. Three shots. One hit. Two's to wound. One wound and a three up invuln. Fine. And this one not snap firing into that squad. Right, I mean like normal firing. Yeah. Okay. Three shots on fives. Whoa! It didn't matter. <laughs> Every time I roll the Three. same dice, I'm like, mm, get yeah. wound. They do the opposite. Three's yeah. to wound. Two, three wounds. Yep, in bone. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so end of the shooting phase, leadership test on ten. Oh, double sixes! <laughs> so the Lord, well, the Lord could still come back, but these guys are all gone. And he runs off the board. <laughs> and then the Lord comes back on a four plus. He does. And I will put them three inches this way. Leaders to test on the Overlord squad. Okay, woo, nine, they made it. Three reanimations and a four plus. All three stand back up, so I guess that kind of makes up for it a little bit. Let's uh, put one right here, one right here, and one right here. And these are going to declare an assault. I have no overwatch. They will be going through difficult terrain, but they have moved through cover, so they'll be initiative one, which is a dangerous thing against my, my war scythe, but... They're paladins, so they're uh, actually fine. all. Uh, Do they have the frag grenades? Frag grenades, oh, frag right. grenades, and psycho grenades in case you have psychers. All right, so never mind. They're just gonna butcher them if they get their charge. It's charge though. Oh, ho, ho! they just made it. Sorry, little lord. The thing that really sucks about that lord standing back up is you did not destroy something in the shooting phase. Yeah. So, You're right. so that means you don't get that victory point. Not this turn. This is kind of a weird situation we have right here because he has a, a card that says if you destroy something completely in the shooting phase, then he gets a point. But the Lord came back, and that always negates having counted as destroyed. Like a Warlord, you don't get a Warlord victory until he's removed and fails his reanimations. But the thing is, the rest of the unit's gone, but he's part of that unit. But if, let's say that he was right here and the unit was there and they ran back here and he reanimated, he would actually no longer be part of that unit because in order to rejoin them, he has to reanimate close enough to them. So they'd become two separate units. 
but the squad wasn't on here for that to happen to. So did you destroy a unit or didn't you? You know what, we don't really know, and it's, I don't think there's gonna be an FAQ to answer that one. So let's just roll the die, and we'll use that as our ruling. Four plus, it counts as a unit being destroyed. Because right. otherwise you can still go for it next turn. Yeah. So it's not the end of the world. So four plus, just roll it. Four plus, it counts as my unit being destroyed. No, okay, so it's the same unit that is still alive. Okay. So assault phase, who's the high initiative here? Not they're, me, I'm two. They're all initiative six because of the halberds. Jeez. So they all just pile on in and just start <laughs> jumping on top of them and hacking them to pieces. I actually forgot that I gave him a two up save. Now it didn't matter because he came back, but it will matter here because these are AP3 weapons. Mm -hmm. All the oh. paladins are master crafted, so we'll have to do them one at a time so we can keep track of who's actually missed. So they have a bunch of different colors. It doesn't matter who's who because they're all AP3, they're all strength four, and they're all hitting on threes. And they all. But hold on, Librarian doesn't have master crafted. Right? Yeah, it's a. Ooh, good. The white one's not master crafted. Everything else is. So they're color coded for each paladin. Hitting on threes. Oh, the green all hit. The purple all hit. You get to reroll one of the reds and one of the blacks. So reroll, hit on threes. That's more. I'm wounding them on fives, but I get my two plus save. So go for it. Fives to wound. One, two, three, four wounds. I have a two plus save though. Yep. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, and he goes down. I'm gonna leave a marker right there. Consolidate, five inches. So if you move them right, you can block him from coming back. So move the right way, make sure that, because I can go within three inches of that as long as I'm not within one inch of one of your U units. Yeah, okay. So, so they're surrounding, waiting for his head to start popping back up and then they just crush it. There. So I'm gonna remove this because there's nowhere in there. Oh wait, I could fit right there. Ah, uh, no, I put these two. Oh, they're right at two and a half inches. So two and a half inches, so my that. base won't fit. Okay, so there's nowhere for me to fit, so I'm just going to remove it. And that is the end of turn two altogether. Now, you hold this objective, and that's worth two points. And what was the other one that you had to hold? What number? Overwhelming firepower. Oh, that's where you had to kill them in the shooting phase, yeah, right. which we didn't count as doing that. Um, and yeah. so that's two points. It. Yeah, you might as well keep it. You okay. should be able to kill something in the shooting phase next turn, maybe. So that's two points for him, which brings the score up to four to two two, right? Yeah, because I got one objective and first blood. And you've got four objectives now. So the score is now four to two for Grey Knights as we go into Necron's turn three. Beginning of Necron's turn three, I draw another card. Secure objective six. All right, I guess I really have to go for that guy. And these guys are going to move through difficult terrain. It's two inches. That really sucks because they're going to be moving through difficult terrain for the charge then. Although I do get a plus one of my charge distances for my warlord trait. So it'll only be minus one rather than minus two. Uh, come on. Hello. And he didn't move, he just pivoted. Laser beams. The rays are just gonna move up here. They don't really have any targets at this moment. Although they are jump infantry, they are allowed to go inside the building. But uh, I'm not gonna bother right now. Because if I can crack this open with the doomsday arc, then these guys can charge the guys inside. Uh, he's just going to move up, ignore his difficult and dangerous terrain, not because he's monstrous, but because he's a Catan. Monolith is going to go for a fun Eternity Gate kind of thing. Oh, wow. See if I get lucky. Suck him in. Catan's just going to go after the vehicle. He doesn't really have anything else to do. Although he could go after the building. Hmm. Psychic phase. Ah, I've got nothing. You win. So he's going to fire the large blast right into the middle. Here up. Oh, that's probably a hit. Yeah, it's fine. It got it. So, strength 9 against armor 14 still. So it's an ordinance, so I get two, sh two rolls, take the best. Five is a glance. Oh. So the rays have nothing to do, so they're just going to run. Two inches. You know what, they're just going to... There we go. And then this one's going to open fire right here. And... It's one inch. Hit would have been three, so one inch will just be two. Two's to wound. Yay, two wounds. One. So you got your invulnerable. Five up invuln. Oh, you got one of them. So one of them is insta-killed. No. And then I'm going to fire his side weapons into this vehicle. It will be snap firing because I fired an ordnance weapon. Rapid fire, hitting on sixes. Three hits. Glancing on sixes. One glance. And there's nothing in the way because it's right there. So that is wrecked. Goodbye. You only get to destroy one entire squad of immortals. So I'm going to use his Portal of Exile, which means I won't be able to fire his Ordnance, because you fire the Ordnance and everything else snap fires. This thing auto hits. You can't fire auto hit stuff at snap firing. I think that's right, but who cares. So everything within D6 inches, which should just be you. 
Five inches. Yeah, we're fine. Because you have to have line of fire to or line of fire is two. Or li line of sight. Yeah, I can talk. So that one. He has to make a strength test. And if he fails a strength test, he's removed as a casualty with no saves of any kind allowed. Now his strength is six. So he only fails us on a six. Six! Oh, he's fine. I'll fire the gauss weapons into him. Not snap firing, because that was just a heavy weapon. Hit on threes. Hit on sixes. One wound. Two up armor. Oh, he fails it. Down to three wounds. I'll run the katan just for fun. An inch. That's fun. And this katan will run five inches. He's just going to kind of start to move this way. I know he's probably just going to get gunned down, but he's got really nowhere else to run. And these guys will... Oh, actually, no, they can't, because I'm not a pharaoh. So if they rapid fire, they can't charge. So nothing there. End of the shooting phase. I'm going to fire this one. Auto placement right there. And that's a hit. So we got... Three hit from that. Strength four, force to wound, one wound. Two up. You're fine. I forgot that this thing was gonna fire at that, otherwise I wouldn't run them. Oh well. So it's gonna fire twin link shot into the building. And on five, I do hit. Nine against armor 14. So I need a five, that's a pen. No cover from that. Those guys don't block it enough. So he's down to one hall point, and it's AP two, so I get plus one at this. If I roll a six, it will collapse. Five, so it becomes a six. So a six, no, they, the objective can still stay there because if you touch it, you have it. So the building suffers a total collapse. So it actually is destroyed, which gives me the victory point for that. And I really shouldn't have run these guys because they have to emergency disembark. Well, actually, they have to disembark from here. So I totally could have charged them. That would have been awesome. But they are going to suffer 2d6 strength six hits. Do that first. 2d6, six. Six, six so two's to wound. Five wounds. And a three plus armor. You lose two guys. It is randomly allocated, and he's got a side cannon in there. So on a on a one, it'll be a side cannon, and a six is rerolled because one, two, three, four, five for the five guys. Mm -hmm. So the first one, oh, the side cannon goes down. Sorry, there's a sergeant too. So we'll say number two is a sergeant. Reroll the one because he's already dead. One is already dead. Three. So it's just regular guy. Okay. They are disembarking, and I made a big mistake by not or by running because I forgot that I could still charge these. Just. They're fine. This is Phase is done, and so these guys have a leadership test or fall back. They're fine. Assault phase, I'm assaulting there, so he gets to Overwatch. D3 auto hits. One. Two, AP4. It's a wound. Dave. I'm fine. So I'm going to need a five inch charge, but I'm going through difficult terrain, so that reduces my charge range by two, but I have my Warlord trait that gives me plus one. So I need to roll six or higher to make this charge. What I really want to roll is like an eight, so that my overlord can get in base contact and use his mind shackle scarabs. Ah, it's like neither. Okay, no charging. Which means I don't get that objective, which means you'll get the objective next turn. So I'm not allowed to discard it. So end of my turn, I did get demolitions for destroying a building. So it brings me up to a score of three. So it is four to three for the Grey Knights. And he's gonna grab this objective six, which really sucks, because I wasn't able to get there. And that is the end of my turn. So we are now going into Grey Knights, turn three. And the beginning of his turn, he gets to draw two more. Secure objective one, and another one of the six. Ooh. What is going on? And reserve roll, three plus. And they come in this time. So they're gonna deep strike right here next to his teleport homer, so they will not deviate. And that's the Justicar, what's his face? Bong. And that, he never actually dies. Like when you remove him, he has like super reanimation protocols. That if he fails it, then you just keep trying the next time. These guys are not gonna charge my rays. I wonder why not. Just activate force and go and insta-kill them. <laughs> These guys are gonna go to this one because he does have secure objective one as one of his cards. Come on, group them together in one little ball. <laughs> and then run the other five and group them together with them. You know you wanna. Psychic phase, how many dice? Well, six, so I get six. And the librarian's gonna cast endurance on the squad. And he gets it, but with the perils. perils. So, Perils of the War, rip. Oh, you rolled a good one. So, leadership test 10, he makes it. So, he's got a three plus invuln, smash, flesh bane, and armor bane. Too bad he's standing back grabbing the objective there. Eh? Force weapon on these, or yeah, they're gonna activate force. Weapon orb charge one, and they get it with two. I'm not gonna deny that one. They're gonna cast hammer hand on themselves. And they get it. I will try to deny that one. I'll use all six dice. Got it. So no hammer hand, but they do have force. He's gonna activate force in case I assault him next turn with my overlord. And he gets it. Prescience on these guys. Warp charge oh, can two. I, do, I can do prescience on those guys. Yeah, it's a blessing. You can, okay. you can target I'll, somebody else. I'm gonna bless those guys. With prescience. Okay, warp charge two. So he needs two of these four pluses. 
Yeah, you got it. And you got perils. Again, <laughs> perils of the warp! Four! So you just suffer a wound with no saves of any kind allowed. So he does have feel no pain. And endurance, actually. So four plus feel no pain. Yeah. So he's good. So he's not good. He takes a wound. So he is down to one wound. And if the other peril had worked out, he'd be dead. Three storm bolters firing at the raids, hitting on threes. Four hits. Strength five, so wounding on threes. Three wounds. Three plus involved. One wound. So this guy is down to one wound. The squad inside of here is also going to target the raids. Yep. Hitting with the storm bolters first. That's six hits. And threes to wound. Oh, five wounds. We got a three up in bone. Three wounds. We'll kill him, and then we'll say him. And the side cannon. Four shots hitting on threes. Three hits. Wow. And wounding on twos. Randy doesn't matter. Oh, just one wound in bone. He's fine. These guys who have prescience are going to open fire on the immortals. Four storm bol storm bolters, twin link because of prescience hitting on threes. Rerolling that one. And side bolts will strength five. Winning on threes. Wow. Wow. All wounded. The Lord has a two-up armor. We got six guys closer, so I'm gonna do these six at a time just in case I really whiff this. Three up save, so only two go down. And then I have two more. That's it, two go down. And the side cannon. Ooh, oh, it's twin length though. That's a prescience, good thing. So four hits. Who's rending? One rending and two wounds. So the two regulars, three plus. So one goes down, and then the rending has a four up cover. So just one guy goes down. All right, the incinerator is going to target the monolith, but it's torrent, so he's also going to hit. Looks like he can hit five of them. No effect on the monolith, so five hits on the immortals, on twos. Three wounds. Got two guys closest, and he's got a two plus save, so I will have to do these separately. Three up armor. They're fine, so another three up armor. They're fine. And then these two storm bolters will open fire on the squad as well. Without the side bolt, so two hits, and then he wounds on fours instead of threes. So one wound. Three up. Fine. Two with the Cybolt guy. Two shots, one hit, and this is wounding on a three instead of a four. That's a wound. Three up. Ah, another one goes down. Heavy bolter in placement. Are you firing at the Katana or are these guys? Those guys. Oh, those guys. Yeah. Three shots on fives. One hit. Freeze to wound. Nothing. Leadership test on these guys. Leadership ten. They're fine. We got four guys that went down. Yep, just four there. Four plus reanimation. Only one gets back up. So I'm going to put him right here. And he's assaulting the monolith. And there you go. These guys are declaring an assault against the rays because they, they don't have hammer hand, but they do have force weapons right now, and they are activated. Five inch charge, nine inches. So they're all going to get in base contact. Make them all initiative one, but still, any wounds that he inflicts that I do not save will be a dead wraith. So I'm initiative two. And he's initiative one because of my whip coils, so I get to attack first. Three attacks each. So 12 attacks, hitting on fours. And strength six, so winning on twos, rending. Oh, two rending and four wounds. Four armor saves. Oh, oh they would have died just from those. All three die. And I'm going to consolidate six inches, so I'm just going to roughly come over here. The Dreadnought is going to hit on fives, or on threes, and he's got his Dreadnought close combat weapon, so five attacks on threes. So four hits. Strength ten versus armor fourteen, so four is to glance. Oh, two glancing. Dink. Yeah, because you need to touch it. And I'm down to two hull points. The assault phase. That's the end, end of the assault phase, the end of your turn. So you have objective number six, which is your objective and my objective, so that's worth two points. And you have objective number one. You didn't kill anything in the shooting phase, though. Just too bad. Still hold on to that one though. So that's two more points for you, bringing you up to how many points? Six? One. Yeah, you're up to six. Uh, seven actually. With, uh, with oh, what? Six, six. Well, line breaker might come into play yeah, later on. Right now you're at six, and I am at three. So six to three as we go into turn number four. Sorry, correction. He has seven points to my three, not six. So I get to draw two more objectives to go back up to three, because he took mine. Assassinate. Score win victory point if I kill an enemy character. Yeah, the Kingslayer! Oh! Oh, it's just during my turn. It's not even like shooting or assault. And secure objective three, which I have. And this is objective three, which is still able to be secured if you touch it. All right, so these rays are just gonna stay in coherency. And hold on to this objective. The Katan's gonna move up to here, looking at the access point, waiting for them to pile out. 
Monolith is going to move out of base contact, like so. And this shooting Catan really has nothing to do anymore, so he's just going to come and touch this objective. And that way that comes up later on, because four really hasn't come up much. I'll just have somebody ready to grab it. Difficult terrain, five inches. Okay, so we are good. You can flame storm me all you like, because then you're getting mind shackle scared. I'm going to leave a space big enough for him to run through. Hello. And this guy is just going to look all the way over at that bastion and hope that he doesn't kill his own Catan. Psychic phase. Denied. Doomsday arc. Boom, baby. Hmm. Might still hit. We'll have to see. Four inches. Oh, yeah. We're still good. It's a big, fat building. So strength nine against armor 14. Ordnance, so I take the best one. Nothing. Fine. And this one's gonna put a template right there. Scatter! Yes! Direct hit. Oh, all five are hit. Two plus to wound, ignoring his armor. Four wounds. They all have five up in bones, so I'll roll them all at the same time. Made one. So it'll kill this guy, then this guy, and then the Justicar dude is gonna look out, sir. If he fails this, that'll get me my victory point. Four up, look out, sir! Oh, he makes it. So they're both nearest. Doesn't matter, do you want the hammer gone or the sword? The sword, okay. All right. This guy does make them fearless. So uh, they're not gonna be running, but still killing three of them is nice. And these guys are gonna rapid fire. 12 shots hit on threes. And then wounding on fives. Two wounds. Two up, armor save. He's fine. Not gonna use my portal of exile on this because like too many of those guys can see it. I'm also not going to fire the particle whip, because if it scatters, then they're all dead. So I'm just going to fire the two Gauss arcs. Okay, my bad, actually. It's only enemy models, so I'm totally going to do Portal of Exile. So D6 inches, so that's two, so that'll be him. So strength test, or you're removed from play. Don't roll a six. Oh, you're fine. Then six shots from the Gauss weapons, hitting on threes, winning on sixes. Nothing. And then the emplacements. Going for the building. So re-rolled, five up, so I'm just going to... Two dice, we got it. Strength nine versus armor 14, so five to glance, nothing. Then I might as well take the shot from the missile right there. Actually, I'm gonna put it right here. If I get lucky, I might kill his character and get that point. Yeah, it'd actually be the warlord too. So three inches. So that puts it right here and actually hits him and the other squad. <laughs> so four to wound that squad. Yep. And a four to wound this squad. Yep. So two up there. <gasps> he loses the demon hammer. And then two up armor save first, and then we'll do the lookout sir if he fails it. He's good. And we got the heavy bolter into him. One hit. Threes. Nothing. And this squad is going to declare an assault on him, so he gets to overwatch. D3. So one. And a two up to wound. That's a wound. I'm fine. And I charge. Five plus one, so six inches. I made it. So closest, and then Overlord gets in base contact. He uses Mind Shackle Scarabs, and then everybody else is just gonna charge it. The Catan will attack, so you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check, but I'm pretty sure you can overwatch from the fire points. So he's gonna fire with four of his guys. We're, I think you're not allowed to use the Heavy Bolter. It says you treat it like a transport. So it's an unplaced weapon though, which transports don't have. Yeah. So we'll just do the four guys shooting. Storm Bolter is hitting on sixes. Nothing. And then the Psy Cannon hitting on sixes. Oh, seven. strength seven, winning on threes. Two wounds, could kill him. I only have a 25% chance of making both of these four pluses. Yep, and he goes down. And everything within D6 inches, two inches, so he's fine. So he goes down. We're gonna start here with Mind Shackle Scarabs. So he's a leadership 10, but he has to make this leadership roll on three dice. Can you do it? Nope. Oh, he fails. So you get to choose a weapon and hit yourself D3 times with it. What's your weakest weapon? Uh, I guess the sword is strength six, but then we have the... It re-rolls to hit into wound. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about hits because it's all automatic hits. So strength six, re-roll to wound, or strength ten, which will be a two plus to wound. So he's going with the strength six one where he gets to re-roll to wound because the odds are better for him. So he does D3 auto hits on himself. One. Oh, you're lucky. Fours to wound, re-rolling. Nope. Re-roll. Oh, he's good! Ooh. Now it's my turn. I gotta start with the two lords with their um, war sides. So seven attacks between the two of them, hitting on fours. Through four hits. These are strength seven AP two, so wounding on threes. Four wounds. Five up in ball. He's only got three wounds left. Five up. Oh, and he goes down! 
Oh! Boom, he's gone. And three inch over our uh, blah blah blah. Blah de blah de blah. Three inch. Wow, where's, come on, what's the word I'm looking for? After you kill, consolidate. Thank you. Jeez, what happened to my brain? So, victory point wise, I get secure objective three, and that's it. So, that brings the score up to seven to four. But as soon as I kill, as soon as I kill his warlord, that's going to be worth D3 plus two points because I have kill an enemy character. I've got, um, I've got uh, King Slayer, which is D3 victory points, and of course, Slay the Warlord, which is one point. The bottom of turn four, draw two new cards. Ascendancy. If you control any three objective markers, you get D3 victory points. That might be tough. Mm -hmm. And secure objective three. No, that one's mine. Although you are troops, so if you get there, you would you would you would uh, have it yourself. Unfortunately, it would mean disembarking and running, and throwing his guys away, or charging and hoping to kill them and then consolidate into it. But it's risky either way. The librarian is actually going to leave his squad and run and hide in the building. Oh, what a coward! And he's running up there. He wants to grab three objectives. It's going to be hard. That might not even be in run range, but we'll see. Not now, but. Will be soon yeah, enough. I guess you could always get it next turn. It's only turn four. There is still turn five. Psychic phase one. I get one for deny the witch. That's <laughs> better. Yeah. These guys are gonna cast hammer hand on themselves because they want to assault this and do some damage. Four plus. You got it. He's gonna have to put force on these guys just in case I crack the building and get them get on with the raise, and he succeeds. And I'll use my one deny the witch, and I don't get it. And he's going to attempt to cast Hammer Hand on himself with the last two dice. He got it. And he's going to run with his Justicare Thong. Thon? Thon, not Thong. <laughs> so three inches. Mm. He would like to roll six. So yes. he would have actually had three objectives. Psy Cannon will open fire, try to glance a little bit, hitting on threes. One hit so far. And re roll the one that fell. Two hits. And I didn't chink, of course, because I don't want to. Hitting on sixes. Or glancing on sixes. No. no. And no. Heavy Bolter will open fire on this squad. Three shots hitting on... Well, hold on. Is it your guy controlling it then? Yeah. Okay, so hitting on threes. Three hits. Threes to wound. One wound. The arc. And he's fine. Three Storm Bolters onto the raise. Hitting on threes. We got four hits. Strength five, so threes to wound. Two wounds. Three up. Oh, I take a wound on the closest one, so he's down to one wound. A cannon. Four shots. Hitting on threes. Three more hits and wounding on twos. Two more wounds. Save. I'm fine. You think? Yeah, it's fine. So the heavy bolter will then auto fire at the end of his shooting phase. So three shots in on fives. Oh, I still got one guy. Yeah. Yep, so in place weapons, so auto fire the heavy bolter hitting on fives. And misses. Auto fire this heavy bolter into them just because why not? One hit. Three's to wound. One wound. Three up in bomb. He made it. These guys will assault. They have move through cover because they're within 12 inches of their warlord, whose warlord trait is that they have move through cover. So roll to see if you make it. Ah, uh, 12 inches will do it. So, ha. hi ya. Uh, ha. So we got nine attacks against the vehicle hitting on threes. So seven hits. So we made a mistake here. Those are actually mastercrafted, so we don't know if those two hits were on one guy. So on four plus, they were on one guy. Nope, so you get two re-rolls, because we're gonna say they're on two different guys. So hitting on threes. Oh, that's pretty far. Oh, they both missed anyways. So you are hammer-handed up to strength six, so glancing on a five against rear armor of 11. Two pens. So it's gonna drop its quantum shielding and it might be dead. So it's open top vehicle, so plus one to these rolls. A six will kill it. Five and five, so immobilized and weapon destroyed. I'm wrong, it doesn't switch over to weapon destroyed. It removes an additional hull point. So it is down to one out of four of its hall points. It actually kind of works out a little better for me. I think I'd rather have my big cannon. So unfortunately there's no victory points for Angel's army this turn, because he needs to hold three objectives, or objective three, or kill something in the shooting phase. So the score is still seven to four as we go into Necron's turn five. So beginning of my turn, I get to drop back up to three. Whoop, I just dropped a bunch. Secure objective six. Uh-oh, not looking good for the Grey Knights. Wants objective six. Yeah, six is really important. These guys are gonna move on forward because they want to kill an enemy character. And even though he can come back, he'll be gone at the end of my turn, so it will count as a point. Mal is gonna move six inches and just grab this objective just in case my assaulting causes me not to be in base contact with this. And this is gonna move back. It'll lose its really good gun. 
because if it moves, it doesn't get to fire the strength 9 AP1, it's just strength 7 AP4. But it can't fire at all if it stays where it was. Actually, you it's immobilized. Oh, it's immobilized. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So you know what? It's going to stay where it is. It's going to shell the, this guy and see if you can take down the building in one shot. These guys are going to shuffle and put their wounded guy in the back. Just to force you to deal with more of them. And I'm going to put them up here so you can't just run out and grab this objective. You're so tough. Second phase done. Shooting phase. I'm going to bo boom. One shot right into him. And we're just going to roll. Scatter. And that's a hit. Strength 9 ordinance against armor 14. And he just 5 or 6. Looking for a 6 and got neither. Do the same thing here. He's going to fire a 72-inch shot into this building. And that's going to be a direct hit, pretty much. It's one inch. Yeah. So that's not going to get my guys. Same thing. That's a glance. No cover in this case, so he's down to three. It doesn't affect the occupants. It used to. That would, that would actually have hurt the occupants before. Rapid fire into the Justicar dude. Ten shots on threes. Oh, wait. I take that back. And I've hit really well. Because I wanted to assault him. Uh, this is hard because now I've seen how well I'm hitting. So you know what? I'm going to let the dice decide if I even have a choice. So on a 4+, plus, I was not allowed to shoot. Alright, dice have decided. I am assaulting. <laughs> and I'm going to fire the Gauss weapon, not the ordinance, because that'll just scatter back and hit myself. I know it. It's on threes. One hit. Four to wound. No wounds. Bam! Hitting on a five. Twin linked. Nope, oh, you missed. Heavy bolter. Two hits. Threes to wound. Two wounds. Two plus armor save. Oh, and he dies and denies me the glory of killing him in close combat. Oh. Oh, well, I guess it's still a character kill. That's a point for me. Salt phase, you get to hit me again. Only six attacks, hitting on threes. Oh yeah, I did them separately. Mastercraft is Mastercraft. Okay, each of them missed once. Good thing we did that separately. And now they all hit. And they're glancing on five still. Everything's still armor 11. Wait, immobilize his weapons kill zero. Oh yeah, yeah, auto hit with all those anyways. It's a good thing you actually hit with all those. And it's dead, but does it blow up? On a six it will, because it's open top. No, it just gets wrecked. Finally got rid of it. So that is the end of my turn, because I have no assaulting to do because he died. And these guys, I'm not gonna bother trying to charge them. Probably just die from Overwatch. So what do I have? I have objective number six. I can steal yours that says objective number three. So that's two points. And I have assassinate, which is kill a character. So that's worth three points in total, which brings the score up to seven to seven. Yeah, you've got seven. I've got seven because I've got uh, first blood. So seven to seven, now it's a tie game at the bottom of turn five. So you draw up to three objectives. So score objective two and demolitions, destroy a building. I don't own any buildings. Oh no, no, I own the one in the middle. And of course you're sitting in the one that you drew, so that'll be worth a point. Yay. Which means if the game ends in this turn, I have no way of beating you. So now we roll to see if this guy comes back, beginning of each turn, on a four plus he does. Nope, but he gets, gets to keep trying at the beginning of each subsequent turn. Difficult terrain test. Six inches. So they're moving right on forward. They want to kill those immortals. Excuse me? Yeah, watch out, dead Justicar dude. Psychic phase. Two. Plus one, plus three, plus one. Here goes force. He's just going to cast force on this one because they want to kill everybody. Oh, you only got one of them, so I'm going for it. Not denied. Hammer hand on them, needing one of these as well. And got it, so they got force and hammer hand. These guys are going to cast force on themselves just in case I am able to assault them. Nope. Yeah. So, shooting phase, heavy bolter first from the guys inside. That's two hits. Use the wound because it's the psychic stuff ammunition. Three up save. I take a wound on the nearest guy who's no longer the injured one. So it's on him. And then two guys firing storm bolters out of the access points. Three hits. And then three's to wound. Three wounds. Oh, two wounds. That kills him and puts a wound on the one that's my choice. Let's say this one. They're about the same. And finally the side cannon. Four shots in on threes, two hits. Two's to wound. That's two wounds. And saved. He's gonna fire the heavy bolter from inside. Three shots hitting on threes. Two hits. Two wounds. Three up saves. One goes down. So grab this guy. And then storm bolters from two of these guys. Oh. Alright, one storm bolter, one side cannon. So one hit, wounding on threes. Three up armor. It's good. And the side cannon. Hitting on threes, so two hits. Use the wound. 
Two wounds. One, one of them's running. He's going to do that one first and kill the immortal. And the next one goes on the overlord. And the overlord's going to tank it. Two plus save. Good. Leadership test on these guys. They fail it! Ooh. So these two aren't coming back. So they got to go by the shortest route possible, which can't get through there. Can't get through there. So it's all about the same. Six inches. So, uh... Basically, the shortest route is this. I just measured it. 20 inches to get through here and 22 inches to get from here. The only way that they would die is if they can't move their full six inches. So full six inches actually brings them to here. So I'm just going to do that. So I guess I'm coming to you. So assaulting, I'll still overwatch because you can while you're running. So six shots, hitting on sixes, one hit. And waiting on threes, that's a wound. Two up save. Oh, kill a page because of the apothecary. Oh, you're fine. Whew, that's a close one. Charge distance. How far do you charge? Obviously you're gonna make it, but how much are you gonna make it? Nine inches. So they're all gonna get in. So closest to closest, and then we just have to get in base contact. This is how you wanna do it? Yep. You had to do the closest to closest, so he has yep, to get mine shackle scarab. And we'll just go like that. Now, I gotta test to regroup. If I fail it, you've just destroyed them. So I have to test to regroup. If I fail this, then I'm just scattered. I make it, so I just regroup. So right here, we have mine shackle scarabs. Leadership nine, three dice. Oh, he fails. I don't even have to see the third one because yeah. that's nine right there. Same time, so even if he manages to kill somebody, which is not likely, then they still get to fight, but he won't get to fight. So D3 attacks on his own unit, not on himself unless he's the only one remaining. So how many? Two. Strength six because of hammer hand, but they are forced weapons right now. So that's kind of nasty. Two's to wound. Two wounds, and he has a two up save. There's only AP3, but if he fails one, it will kill a guy. Double ones will kill two guys. Oh, he does lose a guy. And it's the side cannon guy. Oh! Insta-killed. So he gets to make his attacks next. So he's got three attacks on the charge and on threes. Three hits, and then he's wounding on three uh, twos, because the average toughness is four. So wounding on twos. So three wounds. So it'll go on him, and I will look out sir these, just in case I get three four pluses. Nope, nope, and nope. So he just dies, and he dies. Oh, wait. He's got a two-plus save. I'm going to roll it. So... Two plus save. Nope. Or yes. Two plus save. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he didn't do any wounds. So I'm going to start with my two war size, because they're AP2. Hitting on fours. Oh, only two hits. And wounding on twos. Oh, just one wound. So a two, a five up invul. And then you got feel no pain. Failed, but you have feel no pain still, because the guy's alive. You're, one's dead. Well, not dead. One takes a wound. Yeah. So put it on him. Three attacks on the immortals. Fours, two hits, and wounding on fours. Nothing. So you've Wait, lost he combat. To, he has to stay there, right? Because he has to keep coherency in the unit. Yep, but he still gets to attack. Yeah, cool. Yeah, because he's within two inches. So you've lost combat by three, so leadership down to six. Okay, leadership six. Huh? They run! But they got the NHL No No Fear thing, right? Yeah, they so do. do I catch you? Four, one, I don't. So you just run, because you're uh, initiative five and I'm initiative four with those rolls. So how far do you run? Seven inches, ignoring me, but this is my unit now, so you gotta actually run this way, I guess, towards your table edge. Let's just do that. And that brings us to the end of the turn. And what objectives did you get? You have objective two. Is there anything else that you got? Um, no, demolition. No, because you only have two out of the objectives. And you didn't kill a building. So that brings the score up to eight to seven at the bottom of turn five. So this is all about, will the game continue? If it does, then he'll probably not win just because his guys are dying. And if it doesn't continue, then Grey Knights do win. On a three plus, the game continues. Oh, it stops and it's a Grey Knight victory. Good game. Oh, holy cow. And that's what it's all about right there. All right, Vault members, stay tuned for the post-game show that we're about to have where we're going to talk about the game. And we're going to be playing another game. It's going to be Tau vs. Tyranids. And so we're going to have that one in the Vault right now. So both of those are available to Vault members if you click the links below. If you're not a Vault member, you can click them and get a seven-day free trial, which helps us support us in making all of our videos. So go check them out right now. This is Matthew from Mini Wargaming. Happy Wargaming.